If you see this in the next 45 days, you'll know the tribulation is near. Now, Israel hasn't had a perfect red heifer in 2,000 years, but last fall, five perfect red heifers were airlifted in from Texas by Christian ranchers who knew how important these animals were prophetically to the return of Jesus and thus to us all. And after the cows arrived, the Jewish priests took these five red heifers to a safe hiding place and recently moved them near Shiloh, the ancient biblical site where the tabernacle was located and the Ark of the Covenant was once kept. And now, in 45 days, something really big might be about to happen, something that could lead to the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel or the tribulation and the last seven years of this world as we know it. The priests guarding the heifers know the timing of this event in 45 days. They know the timetable, but they're keeping it secret. But if there's one thing you should be watching for in this next month, folks, this is it. And we're going to tell you exactly what and where to look in this video. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and I understand maybe you're new to this prophecy thing. Maybe you don't know why five red cows would be important, world-changing. Let me give you the down and dirty one-minute version. The Temple Mount in Jerusalem is the holiest place on earth. Unless Jews are ritually pure, they cannot stand, sit, perform sacrifices to build a new temple on that site where the old temple used to stand. And all these things are necessary before Jesus returns. So without ritual purity, for the Jews, Jesus doesn't return. Now, it's Jesus and his blood, of course, that makes all believers pure. But remember, Jews do not have faith in Jesus as of yet. So they need something else to provide it for them so that they can stand, sit, perform sacrifices, or build a new temple. Enter the red heifer. In Numbers 19 in the Old Testament, God gave Moses a way to provide ritual purity for the Jews prior to the coming of Jesus. They were to sacrifice a perfect red heifer, mix its ashes with pure living water, and use that mixture to sprinkle a person or a priest. This made them ritually pure so they could ascend the Temple Mount, right up to the holiest place. And in the 1500 years from Moses to Jesus, this worked pretty well. They had nine perfect red heifers. But here's the catch. The red heifer had to be pure and unblemished. It couldn't have any white or black hair. It had to be completely red, and it couldn't have any injuries. Even the little ear tags that all young heifers get when they're born in the United States to identify them, that would be considered a blemish. It's a tough requirement, and that's why there hasn't been a perfect red heifer for 2,000 years. There have been nine, but not the tenth. Ah, but things have changed. Remember, the ranchers gave the priests who were part of the Temple Institute in Jerusalem five perfect red heifers a year ago on September 15, 2022. They even made sure to send heifers that had never had an ear tag. When they arrived, all five were perfect. And from our best inside information, three of the heifers still are perfect. So the question that hangs in the air is if they're still perfect, why not sacrifice one of them now, mix its ashes with pure water, and sprinkle the whole nation? Well, there are two reasons. The first is can you imagine the protests from radical Muslim groups because they know that this is all about Jews going up to the Temple Mount, something they are absolutely opposed to. Also think about PETA groups who will protest animal rights. That's why the priests are keeping the timing secret. They don't want this getting out. And second, and more important from a religious point of view, is the age of the heifers. According to the Talmud, the writings of the ancient Jewish scribes and rabbis, a heifer has to be two years and one day old to be called a heifer. How old are they now? They were one year old last year when they arrived. Here is the man who found the heifers explaining that age requirement. The, the the mark on when they can be used for the sacri for the ceremony is actually at two years and one day. They have to be in their third year. There's a lot of misconception. People are saying they have to be three, three so yeah. in their fourth year. But yeah. no, they have to be in going into their third year, and yeah. then it's okay. So they're going to be ready to sacrifice very soon. I think it's likely 
there will be a tenth red heifer. Now, we said it will happen soon, but how soon is very soon. And where is that sacrifice going to take place? We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the 70th week of Daniel and the tribulation. How is this red heifer thing related to the return of Jesus? We said it was, but we didn't explain exactly how it will be. So we're going to do that right now. In Daniel 9, 27, the verse that most clearly speaks of the tribulation we read, and he will confirm a covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will become one who makes desolate. That happens to be the Antichrist, by the way. Until a complete destruction, one that is decreed gushes forth on the one who makes desolate. That happens to be when Jesus comes back and kills the Antichrist, by the way. So, in order, we see a covenant with the many is made. Then, halfway through the seven-year period, sacrifices and offerings are ended. That's a really big clue, because in order for them to end, they have to begin. So, in order for the end to take place at the return of Jesus, sacrifices will have to begin and then be taken away. And we know that they need a red heifer first to have the purity to be able to stand on the Temple Mount and make the sacrifices. So a red heifer must take place first. The next question is, will the covenant with the many be related to the start of these sacrifices? We seem to indicate that maybe it could be. Well, we don't know for sure. The Bible isn't clear, but we realize something has to happen for things to go from where it is now, Muslims controlling the Temple Mount, not even allowing the Jews to pray there, which, as we said, is the current situation, to a point where the twice daily sacrifices begin. Something is going to have to change, and likely that is the covenant with the many that we also read about in this verse, a, an agreement with many people, possibly the whole world. And a provision in that covenant may give Israel the right to do those sacrifices. And of course, in exchange, we'll have to give something to the Muslim Palestinians who are opposing the Jews even going up to the Temple Mount. Most likely, this will be the division of the land of Israel in a two-state solution, giving the Palestinians a homeland. What is the impetus for this happening? Maybe the sacrifice of the heifer. Maybe once that happens, a once in 2,000 year sacrifice, every religious Jew and every semi-religious Jew will be clamoring for the resumption of sacrifices. Once they can do it, they will want to do it. Once the Israeli politicians see this movement in the nation, they will begin negotiations for the covenant with the many, giving away land to be able to do those sacrifices. And that will launch the 70th week. Okay, so if the heifers are likely the impetus for the negotiations of the covenant, when does the sacrifice happen? We've been hinting at this in the whole video. Well, it depends on the age of the heifers. We just said the heifers must be two years and one day old to be eligible. So when will the heifers be two years old? The Jewish priests aren't saying, but in a recent video on our channel, the same man who found the heifers and sent the heifers to Israel, let us know. Let's listen. And uh, the other brother is the rancher. Now, he's, when he was a veterinarian his whole life, and his name is Ty. Mm -hmm. And so we get there, and I meet Ty, and he's the most personable, sweetest man you ever met in your life. And he mm -hmm. was so excited that we were there to hunt for red heifers yeah. because when he started his ranch in the 1990s, he wanted, he loved the Bible and he loved the story of Numbers 19. And he wanted to raise the reddest wow. of red Angus that you could raise. So wow. he purposely had traveled all over the United States, had bought the reddest bulls he could find out of wow. Minnesota, put his whole herd together around these red cattle because wow. of Numbers 19. And he says, Byron, if I'd have just known, you know, it's see the season uh, mm -hmm. is in October, and by this time, we'd already found the ones down by Houston, but now it's in October. If I'd have known, I had some born that I think were all red, but we've tagged all of them. Mm. I said, well, Ty, you, gave, you got 250 head of cows. There's some of them still going to give birth. Well, a few, you know, yeah. 
I said, well, let's just pray. We, and uh, we got under a tree. We prayed, Lord, if it's your will, give us a red heifer. Yeah. So we got back in his ranger, and we drove down through the brush, and lo and behold, there was a beautiful red heifer. It had just been born, wow. laying at the feet of its mother, wow. right there waiting on us. Wow. It was absolutely incredible. And that was just number one that he was given. Before it was over, there were more births, and almost all of them perfectly red heifers. Mm. We actually flew some more head rabbis, uh, and very respected rabbis, from uh, had a team of about five, flew in and inspected all of them. So the five you took to Israel, they came from Houston and, and, and yeah. northern Dallas. Was- so the cows were born in October 2021, which means they will be two years old during the next 45 days. But when will they be sacrificed? Prophecy scholar, Pastor Mark Hitchcock, claimed in a recent video that he was told by the same man that the priests are planning Passover 2024. Do you believe this man? I personally don't. I think it's a ruse to get us to not expect the correct time to limit protests or anything else going wrong. Just put yourself in the shoes of these priests. You haven't had a perfect red heifer in 2,000 years, and now you have three. And this heifer is going to be the key to restarting sacrifices and maybe rebuilding the third temple. And every day that goes by, the chance of one of these heifers getting a white or black hair is there, and it could be disqualified. That risk increases with time. So would you take that chance and wait? Or would you do this sacrifice as soon as possible? (laughs) Obviously, as soon as possible. That means sometime in October is when we should expect it. So why would the man have given us a different date. Well, to throw us off a little bit so that they can do it secretly and stealthily and get it done. Folks, you need to be watching for this carefully because once this happens, negotiations for the covenant with the many will almost certainly begin to take place and we think things will begin to happen very fast. So, When you see this in the next 45 days, you know to keep your eyes open for the covenant. And if you're watching, where will the heifer be sacrificed? In Israel, somewhere else? The Talmud says, on the Mount of Olives, where a priest could look down into the Temple Mount and see the temple. Now, the same Texas businessman, Brian Stinson, the same man you just saw in the video, told All Israel News, his group also purchased land on the Mount of Olives that meets the requirements for a biblical sacrifice outside of the temple. So somewhere in this picture, on the western slope of the Mount of Olives, is that site. And they own the land, so it's not like somebody can really stop them. So when will the covenant with the many take place? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? In September 2024, approximately 11 months after the time that we think the sacrifice will take place, the United Nations is preparing a pact for the future that suspiciously seems like it could be that covenant. Click right here to keep watching and discover what the UN has planned and why this ministry thinks Israel may include a provision in that pact to begin the sacrifices. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.